Somewhere I have a round ruler to do that with. I can't find it. It's with the art transfer paper somewhere. I don't know. Hey guys, so I have here, I'm just measuring how far it is, just about perfect, okay. I have here one of Shannon Green's custom keepers. It is one of the plain white ones. Oops, dang it. And I'm trying to center this watercolor box on here. It's pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna draw a line around it and something that's actually sharp because that's not sharp at all. Um, let's see. It was one of the plain white ones and I painted it with some blue, different shades of blue and also white acrylic paint. Now what I want to do is I'm going to paint the center black. This is just some black gesso because we're going to do a dot, dot mandala um, design on here and um, Shannon doesn't know I'm doing this. Um, she hasn't paid me to do this. In fact, I bought the custom keeper with my own money. She may not like it. She may not appreciate it. She may decide, you know, she hates it when she gets it. Um, but I just want to make, I paid for the custom keeper. I'm going to decorate it and send it back to her. She can use it as a display. She can auction it off for money to help her and her husband with their business. It doesn't matter. I'm just doing this because I want to, not because she asked me to or anything. So first thing I want to do is I want to paint the center black. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I do sort of want it a round shape. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to let it dry and then I'll be back. Okay, so here I am using a General's white charcoal pencil to draw some guidelines on the black gesso circle. And then we're gonna take some dotting tools, which you can see on the table to my left, and some acrylic paints, which you can see right above where I'm working. And we're gonna literally just start making dots of paint. I didn't mix the paint with any mediums or anything. I know a lot of dot mandala artists do, but this is craft paint. So it doesn't really need to be thinned down that much. That being said, if you added a medium to it, it would leave the open wet time longer. It would not dry so fast and that might be good for you depending on how you work. And if it was thinner, you would want to add a little bit of a thicker medium, like a gel medium to it. But this craft paint, in my opinion, was a really good consistency to work with and do this with. So I'm just picking colors at random. I really don't have a plan. I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just playing. I end up not using those last two colors and using actually white and black instead. So then it's really easy to get started and you just start with a uh, dot in the middle. I'm using these flat dotting tools. They're meant for making dots of paint. Um, you really, you just dip them in the paint and then touch them to the surface that you're working on. Um, they work really well. Uh, the acrylic paint will flatten out somewhat as it dries, but um, you can push the paint around and get it flatter with one of the smaller dotting tools. I didn't do that, but you could. Again, I'm brand new at this, so I don't have any idea what I'm doing. Um, and doing a mandala is a series of geometric, not geometric, a series of patterns and an even... Um, a series of marks in an even pattern in a circle and so that's what we're going to do only with dots you can see here I used a baby wipe to wipe off that original dot because I did a crappy job on it so I end up 
wiping it off with a baby wipe and then um, doing it again and you can see right there that the um, white chalk pencil or white yeah white um, charcoal pencil comes off really easy so here I'm using one of the smaller dotting tools to just sort of push the paint around and get a nice smooth circle because again I'm, I'm new with it at it by the time I end up at the end of this I figure out how to use the tools and actually they work really well so then I'm going to just take various colors and different sizes of dotting tools I'm going to use the lines I created on the black circle as a guide to try to keep my design even and symmetrical that doesn't last super long I'm an abstract impressionist style of artist in the first place so neat even and geometric and um, yet yeah, clean they're not really my thing but that being said I do find this an interesting challenge and I will definitely be, do be doing it again so there you can see that if you um, wet the dotting tool and do your first big dot and then don't reload it and do it successive three or four dots um, you can get, they'll gradually get smaller and smaller because there's less paint on the tool you can clean up your paint boo-boos with a wet q-tip I do recommend more of a com cosmetic q-tip that has a pointy end it's easier to get into the tight spots at the time of filming this I did not have any of those so I used what I had and I busy myself creating um, the first layer of dots covering the whole entire circle and then letting that dry and I don't get very far before I do um, also some designs on the corners I start with doing the layer of black first of course and then layering a first layer of dots as I did in the center and then let the whole thing dry in between layers because not only will your paint not smear um, but if you want to wipe things off on the next layer if you do more layers the underneath layer is dry so it's not going to really go anywhere so there you have it
okay, so this is, oh, shaky camera. <laughs> okay, so this is round one. I am going to go back over it and do dots on top of dots. I will say two things. Number one, this is totally fun. I could see me doing a lot more of this. Um, number two, how cool is that going to look on the custom keeper on the spine? I love these tools. I didn't pick up my old dotting tools not once. Um, that doesn't mean I won't when I go back over and do the second layer, but these plastic ones, I love them. They are great. I'll put the link for them in the description below. They're a little bit pricey, and you might be able to find other things that you could use. Um, I saw one video where she uses crochet hooks that have a flat end on the back side. You could also, if you have... Um, a hardware store nearby that sells um, plastic um, like doweling. I don't know what it's called. It's not called dowels, but it but it's, looks like a dowel, but it's made out of plastic. Um, you could buy that in different sizes. You could probably use wooden dowels in different sizes. Um, anything that's like round and flat, basically. Um, and then, um, you know, something that's pointy. Uh, these are, some of these are clay tools. Some of these are painting tools. Some of these are nail tools. And then I also have these, which are from Hobby Lobby. Oops. Um, I, I'm okay with these, but they're only good for one pass. There's something about these plastic tools that hold just enough paint to get three or four graduating size dots without re-dipping. Um, anyway, we will continue on. For you, it will be just a second. For me, it will be a hour or so we'll let all the paint dry and I will be right back oh and I'm also trying we're going to experiment and see if like with a wet paintbrush when you're painting your house if you don't know what I'm talking about when you're painting your house if your paintbrush is wet and you just need to let everything dry you want to go back with that same color in a couple of hours or even the next day you can um, put the paper the paintbrush uh, wet with paint on it into a plastic baggie uh, squeeze all the air out and zip it shut and it actually stays wet and moist for at least a day sometimes two um, this is the palette the paint was on I put a baby wipe in there for moisture sucked all the air out do I think it's gonna work no idea but it's an experiment we'll find out when I come back all right I'll be back okay then once everything was dry including the black dots you can see I added to the corners I started layering contrasting colors of dots on top of the prior dots I'd already made, starting of course with the bigger ones and graduating down to some of the smaller ones. I don't do all of them, I do just some of them enough to make it interesting. And um, I do the center part first because I just instinctively know if I do the corners first, I'm going to stick my hand in it. Um, which I think I, I edited out of the video, but I did stick my hand in it a couple times. Um, but because the bottom layer was dry, I was able to just wipe it off with the baby wipe. And if there were any touch-ups, it was very minor ones. So I just continue on having fun. I have the radio turned up loud and I am just making dots and having a good time. It was pretty before but adding the second layer of dots makes it even more interesting. So if you're going to experiment with this, I would say try both ways. You might prefer one way over the other. Um, I can't wait to watch some um, videos with different patterns in it. Some of the other YouTube artists have created and or looking up um, interesting patterns on Pinterest and having my hand at trying different ways of doing this. Um, here you can see I have just about completed the corners and it is looking really good. Once that's done, it just needs to dry thoroughly and I let it actually dry overnight and then I can give it a few clear coats of a uh, finish and I decide to use Deco Arts Triple Thick. Um, the first few coats are watered down and then once those are dry, then I do a sort of thicker coat of that and I top it off with uh, Dorlin's um, art wax which dries hard and doesn't reactivate with heat which is perfect for an application like this and once that's dry you can buff it out and you're good to go okay guys so here it is don't you just love it and let's see if I can do this without messing it up won't it make a great traveler's notebook cover 
So anyway, I um, have stuck my fingers in things a couple times and had to go back and fix them, but I'm going to try not to do that again. I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to clean up the back side. I did put tape on it, but I still got a little bit of schmutz on the back. That's a technical word, isn't it? Schmutz. Finished item. By the time you all see this, this traveler's notebook, um, custom, sorry, not traveler's notebook, hello. This custom keeper um, should be on its way back to Shannon Green and I hope she likes it and can use it and or sell it to raise money. Uh, I'll make sure to sign the inside. And uh, yeah, um, just gives you some idea of what you can do. Um, you can do dot work with just basic tools. If all you have are the ends of pencils or some doweling, you don't need anything super fancy. That being said, there's some really cool tools out there, but give it a try because I think it's a lot of fun. Um, Silly me, I thought we were done filming. <laughs> So I just, I did what I said I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to take a baby wipe to it, but you know what? I'm just barely touching it and all of that white um, charcoal pencil is coming off. A few off. spots, I think I want to take the white paint, which honestly is almost dry, but that's okay. And I'm not going to mix things super well, but... Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is protect what we've done on here. I um, got most of the paint off the back, as you can see. Um, a little baby wipe and a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Make sure you don't get the alcohol on the front side because it will take that paint off too. Um, I also took a little bit of a sanding file to the edges to clean up the rough edges. And we are good to go. But now I've got to figure out how to clear coat it. So. Let me think on that, I'll be right back. I almost forgot to turn the camera on. Oops. So, I sprayed the Custom Keeper with water now that it's dry, and I have some DecoArts Triple Thick. I spritzed it with water because this is really thick. And if you do one layer or two that are um, watered down just a little bit, um, it'll self-level. It'll cover really nicely. You can go over it with a third coat. That is um, lost my train of thought. With a third coat, and it'll make it look like it's covered in resin without actually covering it in resin and getting resin out. Something either wasn't dry. My brush is contaminated, or there's schmutz on the mat because there's a slight cast to the triple thick. Any one of those is a distinct possibility. <laughs> okay guys, I'm going to have to walk you through what I did because my video camera kept running out of juice. <laughs> I did catch most of the cover creation on camera and um, you've already seen that if you're watching this. Um, it was a lot of fun. I did end up putting three coats of DecoArts Triple Thick on the cover and then I put a layer of Dorland uh, wax. Hopefully that um, holds up and protects the cover and things don't crack and I guess only time will tell. It looks like it's okay. Um, these things usually hold up pretty well, um, but we'll see, I guess. Um, anyway, I love the way the cover turned out um, and it feels, I, it's, it feels really cool. I mean, I don't know what to say about that, but it feels really cool. Anyway, I was going to just paint the cover and then send it back to Shannon. Like I said in the beginning of the video, she has no idea I'm doing this. If you're watching this, she's already see, received the cover and I don't know at the time of filming this, I have no idea how she's going to react. She may love it, she may hate it, she may throw it out, she may auction it off, she may use it as a show sample. I don't know what she's going to do with it. I just want to support my friend. So I bought a cover, I decorated it, and I'm going to send it back. It's my way of supporting her and her business. I don't want the money back. Shannon, if you're watching this and you send me the money back, I'm going to be so upset with you. Don't do that. Um, 
So anyway, I was going to just do the cover and send it back to her. And I thought, you know, I had a brilliant idea last night. Well, I think it's brilliant. You guys let me know in the comments below. Um, when we were moving, I put together a household journal. And, you know, over the years that we've had a house together, Bob and I have had different versions of this. Um, and sometimes they included a budget and couponing and sometimes they didn't. It just depended on where we were in our lives and what kind of financial situation we were in, to be honest. Um, so I decided to recreate a sort of a household budget out of this. And I made um, inserts to, uh, to go with it. Now, as part of the aha moment I had for making this, I did create a sticker um, sheet this this one here that has sort of washi tapes to type stickers on it and then a bunch of different um labels section labels including the months of the year on it and it also comes with two different calendar downloads um, so you have everything you need to create using papers you already have in your stash or spare notebooks and you'll see in a minute that's what i did a little bit of both um, to create your own sort of household notebook. So this is what I did. So the first thing I did was with blank envelopes. This is something I learned a long time ago, maybe even from Shannon, to be honest. Um, I took two of these craft cardstock envelopes, um, any two envelopes. I took, I happened to use these. These are 87 envelopes, five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. I took one and I tucked the cover onto the inside and glued it down. Yeah. Then I took the other one, I put glue on just the flap, and I glued the two envelopes together where the fold of that flap is. I put a little bit of masking tape along the seam to reinforce it, and on the back side I used some of the washi stickers to decorate this other edge. I have a bunch of these sti clear, sticky plastic pockets. These are um, actually from a Target bin, dollar bin, uh, like two years ago or last year. I don't remember when. I, when I come across these, I like to get them. They do have them at Amazon. I will link what products I can in the description below. And um, I put one clear pocket on the outside. I use some of the section labels, like if I was gonna have this for my household, I'd have an envelope for receipts, um, and I would probably have a pocket here if there was, say, a gift card receipt or something that I needed to return, like I wanted to have more readily accessible, um, so I put a pocket here. That other receipts would go here until I got home. Uh, business contacts, maybe business cards, uh, postcards, notes, that sort of thing. Passwords. I always seem to like need passwords. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe it's a store rewards card password or something, but you have a secure envelope here. You can tuck the piece of paper underneath. Nobody sees it and nobody really knows is going to know it's there except you. I mean, it does say passwords, but still who's going to be looking in here, but you and your family. Um, there's another sticky pocket, another uh, tuck space for coupons and store cards. I do still like to coupon, so um, that's, and if you want to put the store cards, not in here, but back here, there's a, another clear plastic envelope. I put in a lined, um, notebook for notes and lists and projects. I seem to always need this in the household journal. Um, so whether it's just the honeydew list or notes about a project or something you want to fix or buy or improve or something about your house, maybe notes to yourself and your family about why you're on a budget in the first place and what your goal is what you want to accomplish. If the camera's a little wiggly, sorry about that. I guess I'm bumping the table. Um, this pink notebook I had in my stash, I created a household calendar. This is something I definitely seem to always need in the kitchen. Um, so here we have a household calendar, all 12 months of 2019, with a, a pair of blank pages in between. Um, this is one of the two calendar downloads that's available with the stickers. And then I've used some of the stickers to decorate the pages. So I did the, I went and did the whole month, the whole year. And then this last one is a household budget. Um, this is a notebook I made. The cover is a file folder 
and then I printed these budget worksheets um, that I found. It just was a free printable I found from somewhere on the internet. There's a bunch of different ones, so you could find the one that works for you. Um, and I printed them on cardstock, and then I folded them in half, and I got 12 of them, one for each month, and I put them in here. And I just did a simple three-hole pamphlet stitch binding. You could staple it. You could not bind them at all because it's being held in by elastic. And I made sure to sign it. So I am going to close it up. I'm going to send some of the extra budget worksheets because I printed too many. <laughs> and also a sheet of labels um, and the custom keeper back to Shannon. And I guess we'll find out what she thinks. Um, that's it. I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do. Um, I definitely am also, as I said earlier, going to go and I'm going to link Shannon's store in the description below. Um, she and her husband are starting their own business, trying to support themselves that way, which I think is a wonderful thing. So I would appreciate it if you all go out there and try to support them if you can. Support all your small businesses, your mom and pops. There's a number of them out there. And I try to do that when I can. And um, when I have the budget for it. I sure would appreciate you all doing that too. Um, so all the relevant links are in the description below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the little bell icon if you want notifications of new videos. And above all, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.